good evening. Today uh, we'll start this show in a, a, a very unique manner. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, I want to say uh, good evening, wherever you are. This is uh, um, Zalendo un Uncensored. Uh, today we have got a lot of news that uh, I have packaged here and I wanted us to uh, look into parliament and see what they normally discuss in parliament. Uh, some of you out there have not had the opportunity uh, to witness uh, some of the discussions uh, in, in parliament. Uh, some of it is very, very constructive. Others are uh, very, very bogus. But uh, first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, as a Kenyan, I am disappointed with the, the police force, the police service. It is supposed to serve the people of Kenya and uh, not uh, the government. Uh, the police in Kenya are supposed to uh, protect us. Now, we've heard of stories about uh, uh, the murder or, of uh, one of uh, the bloggers. It's called Njagi. So personally, I don't know him, but uh, this is something that uh, is really, really trending out there. Uh, so Njagi went missing on uh, uh, on 19th of, uh, of August. So when Njagi went missing on 19th of August, uh, that is uh, last month. So it is truly at breaking to year uh, that uh, people are still disappearing. And Jaggi disappeared uh, along others from Kitangala. The fact that uh, their phones were confiscated and yet remain untraceable is deeply concerning. Uh, Bob Jaggi, along with uh, Jamil and Aslam, uh, Aslam, uh, is called Aslam Longton, uh, have been missing since August 19th. Since August 19th, despite court orders, the Inspector General, uh, which the, the story I carried here just the other day, the Inspector General has been given uh, summons to appear in court and he has refused. And the reason why he refused is because of this case. He doesn't want to answer uh, uh, questions on this uh, particular matter. Perhaps they should just give us uh, uh, they should just give us information of uh, at least uh, the what they have been doing uh, as pertaining uh, this particular case. Now the families are frustrated. Uh, and uh, they're crying out to the public if they know if anybody has got information about their missing uh, children. Uh, some Bob or maybe the Mob or maybe Jamil, maybe had got uh, uh, children. Uh, they are wondering where their father is. Now, this is a serious issue. The police who are meant to protect and serve uh, seems to be failing in their duty. And uh, this situation highlights a significant issue within the system. Uh, it is essential that for the authorities to be held accountable and for justice to be served to, uh, and not just for the missing individuals, uh, but for the trust and safety of every Kenyan. Now, do we trust? Uh, the police to investigate anything in Kenya. Now, please, 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 uh, if you are watching Africa, make sure that uh, you leave a comment on this particular issue. Uh, share the story widely. Uh, somebody will act. If we share uh, this story very, very widely, somebody will act. If you have got the facts about uh, the missing and the abductions of these people. Please uh, come out, uh, make some noise, make some noise. If you met them just before they were being abducted by uh, the police force, if you have got some videos, uh, please push them outside there so that 
uh, these people can at least we can at least know uh, where they are. Uh, with this kind of pressure, the police will act. Uh, the civil society, we want to thank you very much for highlighting these particular issues. Uh, we and uh, small medias on YouTube will keep on pushing, but we also urge you to give us the numbers. If you are not subscribed to um, Zalendo Uncensored, uh, please do subscribe because here yeah, we will give you the facts. If you have got information that you are afraid of putting out there, uh, please do share it. We will share it here. And uh, uh, maybe maybe somebody out there will be uh, held accountable held accountable one day. They might not be held accountable today uh, because they are protected by the government of the day. But in future, in future, the IEG, uh, the DCI, these people will uh, face the consequences. They might be happy today. They are smiling about all this. But uh, let me tell you, it's just a matter of time. It's a matter of time, and uh, they face the consequences of uh, of their action. So, yes, you can decide to do uh, nothing about it. You can play around uh, the way you are doing. But uh, who knows? Uh, maybe 2027, you'll not be in power. Maybe 2032, you'll not be there. Uh, now, I encourage you viewers to take a specific action. Uh, even signing petition, demonstrations are coming. Uh, that one I will highlight here. Uh, that is a good uh, call of action. Uh, the demonstrations are coming on Sunday. I have seen, uh, the, I've seen a pamphlet out on social media that uh, demonstrations will be out. So... If you will be participating in the demonstration, that is good. Make sure that you are out there. Make sure that your voice is heard. And uh, believe you me, somebody will act when they see some actions uh, being taken by uh, by the citizens. We cannot just sit there and, uh, and watch uh, young people being abducted and missing. So let us be very vigilant and uh, be your brother's keeper uh, because uh, the police are out there uh, to suppress uh, the freedom of expression. You saw what happened in the, uh, to the journalist. There's a, uh, there, is a, there is a movement uh, within the police force that is busy hunting bloggers up and down, abducting them. And uh, they are missing. Some of them, uh, their bodies have been found. And uh, maybe within a few days, you'll uh, see uh, these boys resurfacing uh, somewhere uh, after a lot of a lot of pressure. But let us keep on putting pressure on the government of William Ruto uh, to ensure that uh, uh, there is some law and order and sanity within the police. Uh, for the police that are not uh, doing their job, please uh, fire them. If you can't fire them, then uh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. These are people who are going to post you the elections in 2027. And uh, if uh, UDA or Kenya Kwanzaa thinks that uh, they are invisible. The people of Kenya are watching. You just watch what the Gen Zs could do. Uh, it is not over yet. These are young people who are being adapted, abducted, and yet the government is not coming clean. We have not seen any police officers facing uh, the law. None of the police officers has been arrested following uh, the killing of protesters. Nobody, <clears throat> not even the political parties are pursuing. Now, the other political party that was uh, uh, on the side of the people, ODM, is now in the government. They no longer really care about uh, the people. So we, Kenyans, you are on your own. Uh, we have to do what is necessary to push uh, the government to work on some of these issues. Otherwise, let me leave you with uh, <laughs> what is happening in, in, in parliament. But before that, uh, uh, there is a new tax that has been introduced in, in Kenya. If you didn't know that uh, 
kuanzia lini uh, you'll be paying uh, you'll be paying some tax ukienda if you buy mboga from the mama mboga i understand now there is a tax or you can be you can even be charged you know <laughs> this is what is happening in kenya now buying groceries from unlicensed mama mboga is now prohibited you are required to apply uh, for a license uh, to grow fruits and vegetables license will cost about uh, 10000 uh, from nema you are also required to pay 2500 for soil testing and analysis uh, 4700 for water testing and analysis you are uh, you are supposed to also pay 5000 for satisfaction uh, you must also acquire acquire what a certificate uh, license uh, you risk you risk a jail term or, or for buying mboga from a licensed farmer farmers uh, to undergo the first and training uh, for 2 years and kit at uh, 15k boss this government is out to make sure that uh, they get every little penny uh, from from the people now this is this is very very sad if you're watching uh, africa 24 uh, this is mzalendo uh, please join me in this kind of conversation so that we highlight uh, what is happening in the political scene and the issues that are affecting every other uh, Kenyan. I have put the link out there for you to join. You can join me uh, anytime now uh, so that we discuss uh, this uh, this issue. But I will also leave you with uh, uh, what transpired in, in Parliament in case you missed uh, that session in Parliament. It was very, very explosive. Uh, some of the issues were, were discussed. And uh, if you're going for demonstrations on uh, on Sunday, something is also out there that is very, very good. All roads uh, all roads lead to Nairobi CBD, Adani, Adani, uh, Adani corruption. Uh, that is the JKA saga where uh, the government is selling it to the Indian guy. Uh, Bob Njagi, there will be a demonstration also on that particular issue and extrajudicial killings in Kenya. Uh, quarry victim uh, justice, the, the people uh, of Quare need justice, that will, they will also be participating in the demonstration. And police, police brutality, that one has been with us for forever. Uh, postal cooperation scandal, uh, there will be also people uh, uh, highlighting what is happening in the scandal of the postal uh, corporation uh, stall uh, projects uh, morara will be there to uh, emphasize on the stall government uh, uh, projects and the rasa people's uh, massacre i saw that issue in parliament i think uh, 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 senator kajuang although i don't agree with him in most cases but this one i really like what he presented in in uh, in the house so i i'll, I'll leave you with the, the, that videos in parliament so that you can uh, watch and analyze what your legislator is doing in the house uh, sometimes we do talk but sometimes we need to give them time and listen to our legislators uh, what they are saying and analyze their statement as they speak otherwise uh, make sure that you join the demonstrations come uh, this uh, Sunday. A 10 minutes quorum bell is currently on at the Senate this afternoon. Person to the guide directives by the speaker is accordingly guided by the House turning orders on matters quorum when the House is commencing business. And uh, as we await for
for that quorum to be attained, our dear viewers. I was just informing you of the upcoming Senate Mashinani that will be happening this year in the great Busia County on the 28th to the 31st of November 2024, where residents of Busia County will be having a chance to mingle and interact with senators as well as learn more on um, matters legislative business this October. And uh, away from that, about 32 reports from the Office of the Auditor General are said to be tabled this afternoon. The Senator for Kiambu County will be seeking to have the House consider his motion this afternoon. The motion is in regards to the consolidation of bursary funds for equitable access to education in Kenya. The mover of this motion notes that aware that person to Article 53 of the Constitution, every child in Kenya is entitled to free and compulsory education and uh, the Basic Education Act provides that basic education should be guided by the principles such as equitable access to all youth and equal access to education as well as matters institution. And uh, further noting that over the years various interventions have been made including the issuance of bursaries through the National Government Constituency Development Fund, popularly known as NGCDF, the National Government Affirmative Action Fund, GAF, the Ministry of Education, and the county, of, the county governments through various county bursary funds. The move of the motion is concerned that despite these efforts, school fees remains and affordable for many parents, and the allocation of bursaries has been plagued by matters nepotism, favorism, political manipulation, and that there is lack of transparency and accountability. Further, concerned that the public learning institutions primarily funded by the government through the Ministry of Education and in the financial year 2024-2025, approximately 656 billion shillings has been allocated to matters the education sector. Now, therefore, the Senate urges the Ministry of Education to do a number of things. There are three in number. One is to audit the funds allocated to bursaries by both the national government and the county governments. Two, the Ministry of Education do consolidate the funds distributed by various government entities and agencies with the aim of directing that these funds that be directly sent to schools as supplementary capitation to facilitate the achievement of free secondary education. And finally, to calculate the cost of education per learner and make this information public for primary, secondary, as well as tertiary institutions, including a detailed breakdown on the annual financial requirements of each student across the country. Senator Gloria Roba. Will this afternoon pass on to standing orders number 53, subsection 1, be seeking a statement from the Standing Committee on Matters Health regarding the operationalization of Linda Mama Healthcare Program? Similarly, she will also be seeking a statement from the Standing Committee on Matters Labor and Social Welfare regarding the safety and welfare of employees of Moja Expressway Company who are stationed along the Nairobi Expressway. The Senator for Lamu County, Senator Joseph Kithuku, 
will be seeking a statement this afternoon from the Standing Committee on Matters Finance and Budget regarding the status of deployment projects in the Great Lamu County. Senator Mohamed Chute, who happens to be the senator for Marsabit County, will this afternoon uh, pass on to standing order number 53, subsection 1 land, environment, and natural resources regarding the status of drought resilience program in the northern Kenya. We have quorum now. You proceed to call out the first one. Order number one. Administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. Honourable senators, honourable senators, we have a visiting delegation from the County Assembly of Baringo, which is uh, visiting the Senate. Honourable senators, I would like to acknowledge the presence in the speakers' gallery this afternoon of a delegation from the County Assembly of Baringo. The delegation comprised of 20 clerk, as clerk assistants serving in the Directorate of Legislative and Committee Services. The delegation is undertaking a training on lawmaking and procedural matters at the Center for Parliamentary Studies and the Training, CPST. Honorable Senators, in our issue tradition of receiving and welcoming visitors to Parliament, I extend a warm welcome to the delegation and on behalf of the Senate and my own behalf wish them a fruitful visit. I thank you. For Nandi County, in less than under one minute, I welcome the visitors. Almost in Bonda Baringo from Nandi. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Sir, on behalf of the Senate of Baringo and on your own behalf, let me extend a warm welcome to the members of County Assembly for Baringo County Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I want to confirm, as the darling of members of County Assembly or MCS across the country, I want to assure in your indulgence that they are welfare to do the SRC Salaries and Remuneration Commission in reviewing their parks and salaries and welfare is well catered for. Number two, Mr. Speaker, as the Vice Chairperson of Senate Public Accounts Committee, I want to assure that Chairman, uh, to Mr. Speaker, sir, that uh, we are reviewing the law to give financial autonomies to counties so that they can have their county revenue fund at the National Treasury, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank you because that amendment has been sponsored by you as truly Senator Katuri uh, Murungi. I want to ask the MCS, please, when you do oversight, don't fear. Do oversight as per the law, as provided by the Constitution. We wish you well. We wish you good learning experience. The interest of the MCS we will always protect from their welfare, their capacity and ability in developing a primary oversight. Uh, Baringo is a special county to me because my brother married from Baringo County, and we are proud. We wish you well, and uh, may God bless you as you go back to Baringo. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. But when I read the communication and did not say that these are members of County Assembly from Baringo, I say there are 20 clerk assistants serving in the Directorate of Industry and Committee Services. Therefore, let's make progress. Uh, next order. Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. Okay, next order. Order number five, uh, papers. Uh, majority leader. As in delegate and to you, Senator Chalagay, the papers. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the Senate. Today, Wednesday, the 18th of September, 2024. This is a SRC end of term report for the financial year, financial years 2018 to 2024. Then the reports of the Auditor General on the financial statements for the year ended 30th June, 2022 of the following. Bithini Level 4 Hospital in Machakos, Kangundo Level 4 Hospital in Machakos, Sultan Hamud Sub-County Level 4 Hospital in Makueni, Kulungu Sub-County Hospital in uh, Makueni, Mboni Sub-County Level 4 in Makueni, Migosi Sub-County Hospital in Kisumu, Obar Ober Kamoth Sub-County Level 4 Hospital in Kisumu, Nyaera Sub-County Level 4 Hospital in Kisumu, Mandera North Sub-County Level 4 Hospital in Mandera, Tabaka Sub-County Referral Hospital in Mandera. Then the reports of the Auditor General on the financial statements for the year ended 30th June 2023 are for the following. Tabaka Sub-County Referral Hospital in Mandera, Mandera North Sub-County Level 4 Hospitals uh, in Mandera, Migosi Sub-County in Kisumu, Sultan Hamoud Level 4 Hospital in Makueni, Kilungu Sub-County Level 4 Hospital in Makueni, Mboni Sub-County Level 4 Hospital in Makueni, Migwani Level 4 Hospital in Kitui, Ikuda Level 4 Hospital in Kitui, Kanyangi Level 4 Hospital in Kitui, Masinga Level 4 Hospital in Machakos, Mwala Level 4 Hospital in Machakos, Kimiti Level 4 Hospital in Machakos, Dithini Level 4 Hospital in Machakos, Manga Sub-County Level Hospital in Nyamira, Masaba Sub-County Level 4 Hospital uh, in Nyamira, Nyangena Sub-County Hospital uh, in Nyamira, Miranga Sub-County Hospital in Kisumu, Nyangande Sub-County Level 4 Hospital in Kisumu, Sondu Sub-County Level 4 Hospital in Kisumu, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga uh, Teaching and Referral Hospital in County Government of Kisumu, Nyaira Sub-County Level 4 Hospital uh, in Kisumu. Mr. Speaker, I beg to lay. Thank you, Majority Dinda. Next on Order number six, notices of motion. Senator Karungo Adangwa. Give Senator Karungo the mic. Clark. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise to give notice of the motion that calls for consolidation of bursary funds for equitable access to education in Kenya. Aware that past one to Article 53 of the Constitution, every child in Kenya is entitled to free and compulsory basic education. And the Basic Education Act provides that Basic education should be guided by principles such as equitable access to all youth and equal access to education or institutions. Further aware that many students in secondary schools and higher education institutions come from financially disadvantaged backgrounds, making it difficult for them to afford school fees and access education opportunities. Noting that over the years, various interventions have been made, including the issuance of bursaries through the National Government Constituency Development Fund, NCGDF, National Government Affirmative Action Fund, GAF, the Ministry of Education, 
and county governments through various county bursary funds, concerned that despite these efforts, school fees remain unaffordable for many parents and the allocation of bursaries has been plagued by nepotism, favoritism, and political manipulation, lack of transparency and accountability. Further concern that public learning institutions are primarily funded by the government through the Ministry of Education. And in the financial year 2024-2025, approximately Kenya Shilling 656 billion was allocated to the education sector, making it difficult to ascertain the specific funds granted to each student and that the lack of transparency in the disbursement of bursaries from various agencies, making it difficult to determine the total amount allocated in a financial year, thus hindering efforts to ensure equitable access to education for financially disadvantaged students. Now, therefore, the Senate urges the Ministry of Education to, one, audit the funds allocated to bursaries by both the national government and county government. Two, consolidate the funds distributed by various government entities and agencies with the aim of directing these funds directly to schools as supplementary capitation to facilitate the achievement of free secondary education. And three, calculate the cost of education per learner and make this information public for primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions, including a detailed breakdown of the annual financial requirements for each student across the country. Mr. Speaker, I give notice. Very well. Uh, next is uh, Senator Karen Yam, give notice of your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to give notice of the following motion. Aware that schools play a, a crucial role in shaping the future of our children and providing a safe environment for learning. Conscious that personal growth is vital and that safety within schools is a fundamental right of every student, teacher, and other workers that, and that safety is critical in improving the overall quality of education. Further aware that many schools, particularly in rural and marginalized areas, lack the necessary resources and expertise to manage the safety risks effectively, which exposes students and staff to potential harm, noting that deploying dedicated safety officers in schools will significantly reduce risks, enhance preparedness, and provide immediate response capabilities during emergencies. And that first state, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Ronda Speaker, members. please ask Ronda. my colleagues to consult in low tones. They are louder than me. Senator Kinua and Senator Proceed and uh, don't address the members. Uh, yes. I'm protecting you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Kale. Mr. Speaker, noting that you're all protected. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, noting that deploying dedicated safety officers in school will significantly reduce risks, enhance preparedness, and provide these trained safety officers will oversee safety protocols, provide first aid conduct safety drills, ensure fire pre preparedness, manage emergency evacuation, and assist in addressing violence or other threats within school environment. Concerned that there have been increased incidents of insecurity, violence, accidents, and other safety challenges in both primary schools and secondary schools across the country. Now, therefore, the Senate urges the national government through the Ministry of Education to, one, 
recruit and the areas to effectively deploy and utilize these safety officers. Mr. Speaker, I give notice. Thank you. Next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. We have uh, several statements and uh, standing on the 53-1. We start with uh, Senator Mohamed Chute. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I'm requesting for a statement on the status of KFW-funded drought resident program in Northern Kenya. Mr. Speaker, sir, gentlemen from the Standing Committee on Land, Environment, and Natural Resources regarding the status of KFW Development Bank funded drought resilient program in Northern Kenya. In the statement, the committee should one, provide a list of counties where KFW funded drought resilient program in Northern Kenya has been implemented, stating the commencement date, planned implementation period, and the number of project clusters in each county. Number two, disclose the total amount of money allocated for the full implementation of the program, specifying whether these funds by German-based KFW Development Bank have been given to the government as a grant or as a loan. Number three, Honorable Speaker, provide details of budgets for the first, second, and third annual investment plan, which is AIP-1, AIP-2, and AIP-3, indicating the respective contribution of the national and the county governments. Number four, provide details of all projects under DRPNK, including the respective cost of each pro project, whether the projects have been initiated, completed or tendered, but not yet commenced, and clarifying whether public participation has been conducted for each project. Finally, number five, Mr. Speaker, state the duration of cost of the contract for consultancy services awarded to GOPA, G-O-P-A, worldwide consultants, indicating total amount paid to the company so far. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Next is uh, Senator Joyce Corrie. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I rise special to the Standing Order 531 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Education regarding the incorporation of teachers with diploma qualification to the Teacher Service Commission. In the statement, the committee should explain why the teachers who are currently uh, holding an upgrade diploma in primary teachers education uh, teacher education are yet to be employed by the, TSC, uh, the Teacher Service Commission, that is TSC, despite their training in pedagogies, pedagogies and CPC learning areas and their ability to teach CPC grades and junior secondary school, that is the JSS levels. Secondly, detail the measures that the TSC has established to prioritize teachers with uh, an upgrade diploma in primary teacher education, UDPTE, during the recruitment process. And finally, Honorable Speaker, outline the actions taken by the Ministry of Education and the TSC to ensure that employed, employed UDPTE teachers are placed in job group C1. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Good. Next is Senator Gloria Robo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise past one to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Health 
regarding the status and implementation of the Linda Mama Healthcare Program. In the statement, the committee should state the current status of the Sorry, operationalization. Senator Gra Gloria, your statement is, on, uh, is to the Standing Committee on Labor and Social Welfare. I, ha I have two statements. And of, of employees. I have two statements on 53.1. On on the, on there are two on the paper. paper. Okay, I'll start with the one to labor. Mr. Speaker, I rise pass one to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Health regarding the status and implementation of the Linda Mama Healthcare Program. In the statement, the committee should state the current status of the operationalization of Linda Mama Program nationwide, two, give details of the benefits uh, package available to expectant mothers as myself, including antenatal delivery and postnatal services, as well as critical care of newborns. Three, provide a list of hospitals empaneled by NHIF to provide services under the Linda Mama program, including the criteria used for their qualification. And four, identify the challenges faced by NHIF in fully implementing the program and outlining the government measures to address these issues. Mr. Speaker, I have a second statement on 53.1. Senator Roba, why are you wondering uh, issues that are not on your statement? Because I'm looking at the statement and I cannot see where you, you have indicated like yourself. Sorry? That your statement has no phrase like yourself. You know, you have seen. Oh, about the expectant mothers. Yeah, now that bit is not on, on your statement. Okay, I stand guided. However, Mr. Speaker, I am expectant. Mr. Speaker, can I go ahead and read 50 on my second statement? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise past one to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Labor and Social Welfare regarding the safety and welfare of employees of Moja Expressway Company stationed on the Nairobi Expressway. In the statement, the committee should Clarify whether the Moja Expressway Company provides pickup and drop-off services for its employees stationed on the Nairobi Expressway, considering that their workstations are not accessible by public transportation. Two, state the alternative means used by the employees to access the workstations. Three, outline the steps taken by the company to ensure its employees have access to safe and convenient means of transport to and from work. And finally, explain other measures put in place by the company to address the safety concerns associated with its employees climbing over the Nairobi Expressway barricades to access their workstations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Edwin Sifuna. Mr. Speaker, I rise pursuant to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on National Security, Defense, and Foreign Relations on the alleged kidnap of a Kenyan truck driver, Ms. Florence Wanza Munyao, in the Democratic Republic of Congo on the 27th of August, 2024. In the statement, the committee should address the following. Number one, explain the circumstances surrounding the disappearance of Ms. Munyao. Number two, state her current whereabouts. And number three, outline the actions taken by Kenyan authorities to secure her release and enable her to be reunited with her family from Machakos County. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Next is Senator Chalige Samson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Request for statement on audits by the Public Service Commission of Human Resource and Payroll Systems in Government. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise pass one to Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Labor and Social Welfare regarding the audits by the Public Service Commission of Human Resource and Payroll Systems in Government. In the statement, the committee should, one, state the legal provisions that gives the, the Public Service Commission authority to audit human resource and payroll practices, procedures, and records of county governments. Number two, Mr. Speaker, Provide a list 
of all county governments that have requested the Public Service Commission to audit their human resource and payroll practices, procedures and records disclosing the findings of the said audits from county governments. Number three, Mr. Speaker, state whether the audit reports have been tabled in respective county assemblies and explain why they have not been tabled in Senate. Number three, Mr. Speaker, provide a schedule of the respective costs of each audit, indicating the entity that bore uh, the cost. Number five, Mr. Speaker, sir, disclose the findings of the most recent audit by the Public Service Commission of the Human Resource and Payroll Practices, Procedures and Records of National Government Ministries, Departments and Agencies, State Corporations, Parastatals, Universities, and other tertiary institutions outlining actions taken against individuals found culpable of illegalities, malpractices, or negligence. And finally, Mr. Speaker, outline the measures put in place to enhance transparency in the recruitment processes undertaken by Public Service Commission, which are currently shrouded in secrecy. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Honorable Senators, we have a visiting teachers and students from Olptio Boys Secondary School in Bomet County. Honorable Senators, I would like to acknowledge the presence in the public gallery this afternoon, visiting teachers and students from Olptio Boys Secondary School in Bomet County. The delegation comprises four teachers and 64 students who are in the Senate for a one-day academic exposition. Honorable Senators, in addition to the tradition of receiving and welcoming visitors to Parliament, I extend a warm welcome to them and on behalf of the Senate and on my own behalf, wish them a fruitful time for running. I thank you. The Senator from Bomet County is not allowed. Bomet in Bundas Kericho. So, Majority Rinda, welcome these great uh, people, boys from Bomet County. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I don't mind uh, welcoming the students from Ulbutio. Uh, if I got the name uh, correct, uh, I can see them nodding. I know where uh, Ulbutio is. Uh, Senator Sige was in the House earlier, so he must be somewhere within the precincts of Parliament. On his behalf, uh, uh, on his behalf, Mr. Speaker, I'd wish to welcome the visiting students together with their teachers. I hope uh, they get to enjoy their tour of uh, Parliament, enjoy debate, uh, see us uh, in action. Uh, perhaps it's different from what they watch on TV, realize that... Uh, People can be orderly in this house. You know, the only clips that go out of this house with a speaker is when uh, Senator Sifuna is breathing fire from his nostrils, or Senator Chirarge is not seated calm like he is this afternoon. So this is how typically Parliament looks on a calm afternoon. Uh, though I cannot assure what will happen for the rest of the afternoon, because things boil up very quickly. But uh, I wish the students well uh, as they pursue their studies, May they achieve all that they have set out uh, to do. Most welcome to the Parliament of Kenya. Uh, Senator Joyce Korir, uh, maybe under one minute you can also welcome them. Yeah, um, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. The Senator was just around. And on behalf of my Senator and this House, 
allow me to also welcome the students from Olbuchia uh, Secondary School. This is one of the secondary schools that is well uh, that is performing uh, uh, within the county. And I want to say that, uh, Honorable Speaker, that uh, the opportunity that they have given, uh, gotten to be here is an opportunity that they will get uh, 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 to see what is really happening because they always say seeing is believing, Honorable Speaker. So I want to believe that they are going to learn a lot because this is a house of procedures and there are a lot of debates that are taking place. I know the, the Senate is just a, a replica of the, the Bomet Assembly and uh, a number of things that are being taken there are the same things that are happening here. It's only that the, 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 the responsibilities or the roles of this house are different. Otherwise, I want to say that they are welcome and uh, uh, they will learn a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, statement from Senator Professor Tom Ojeda, Senior Council. You have four statements. How many do you want to read today? Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I will read all the statements. They are short statements. Okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as you know, Kisumu County is a county of excellence, and we lead in the broad-based uh, system. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I have four statements. The first statement is on the state of education in Kenya. I rise under Standing Order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Education regarding the state of education in Kenya. In the statement, the committee should, Mr. Speaker, state the factors that have contributed to the ever-recurring strike by teachers, explain how the recent teacher strike witness in August and September the teachers are here. Three, outline steps taken by the government to permanently address grievances by teachers and ensure that similar grievances do not lead to industrial action in the future. Provide details of the current terms of employment, salaries and benefits for teachers serving in public schools at various cadres, explaining how these terms, salaries and benefits compare with those of teachers serving in private schools. And lastly, explain measures put in place by the government to ensure Kenya achieves and sustains the recommended teacher-student ratio in public and private primary, junior, secondary, and secondary schools disclosing any plans by the government to recruit additional teachers. Mr. Speaker, my second statement is on the safety of pupils and students in schools across the country. And this is necessitated, Mr. Speaker, by the strikes that we have seen in schools. I rise first one to Standing Order 531 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Education regarding the safety of pupils and students in schools around the country. Mr. Speaker, I wish to convey my heart heartfelt condolences to the families who have tragically lost their children due to the recent fire, break, fire outbreaks in various schools and wish a speedy recovery to the children who are injured during these incidences. In the statement, the committee should, one, explain the root causes of student unrest and the increasing, increasing number of fires in schools that have been reported across the country. Two, outline the policy of the Ministry of Education on the safety of pupils and students in schools and disclose any measures to enhance the safety of those in boarding schools. Three, explain any existing emergency protocols for handling fire outbreaks and other disasters in schools and state steps to enact a harmonized disaster preparedness and emergency policy, including man mandatory emergency drills in all schools. Four, state measures in place to ensure accountability and compensation to families of victims injured or succumbing to school fires and other disasters. Five, outline any measures to protect pupils and students in boarding schools from the threat of human trafficking. And lastly, disclose the budgetary allocation set aside to mitigate safety of pupils and students against fires and other disasters in public schools from financial years 2020 to date. Mr. Speaker, my third statement is on the state of maintenance and repair of medical equipment, including vaccine refrigerators in health centers and hospitals uh, in Kisumu County. Mr. Speaker, I rise first one to, state, to order 53-1 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Health regarding the state of maintenance and repair of medical equipment, including vaccine refrigerators in health centers and hospitals in Kisumu County. In the statement, the committee should provide details on the current supply and availability of drugs, including vaccines in health centers and hospitals in Kisumu County, 
and outline the measures in being implemented to address the existing shortage, shortage of drugs and vaccines. Two, inform the Senate on the conditions of maintenance and repair of all medical equipment in health facilities, particularly vaccine refrigerators and associated budgetary implications, stating the frequency of servicing and repairs. Three, disclose the budget allocated in the financial year 2021-2025 from both the county and national government for maintaining a consistent supply of drugs and vaccines. And lastly, state the budgetary allocation for the years 2024-2025 from both Kisumu County and National Government for the repairs and maintenance of medical equipment and refrigerators. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to seek a statement under Order 531 from the Standing Committee on Devolution and Intergovernmental Relations regarding the operationalization of municipalities of Maseno Holo, Kombewa Bodi, Ahero Awasi, Muoroni Chemelil, and Kantito Paponditi. Article 186.1 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, read together with, article, with Section 9.1 and 9.3 of the Urban Areas and Cities Act 2011, allows the county governor, upon the resolution of the county assembly, to confer status of municipality on a town that meets the set-out thresholds. The conferment of municipal status to five uh, towns above mentioned calls for good planning and execution to ensure effective governance accelerated development and improved livelihoods of the residents. In the statement the committee should, my Lord, uh, Mr. Speaker, explain the status of compliance by the county government of Kisumu with the provisions of essential services in municipalities emulated the first schedule to the urban areas and cities act 2011. Two, state whether all functions outlined in schedule four, part two of the constitution, including the attendant staff, budget, and assets have been transferred from the respective county government departments of the municipalities as per the Gazette notice of 13th October 2023 issued by the governor, Governor Professor Peter Nyangnyo. Third, explain whether the new municipalities have established physical offices and if so, where these offices are located for each of the five municipalities and whether these municipalities have operational bank accounts for financial transactions management and day-to-day -day running of operations and provide details of the bank accounts and any funds allocated to, their, to the, account, to the uh, municipalities for their establishment. Four, state whether the staff have been deployed in these municipalities, and if so, provide details on the number, remuneration, and the role of the deployed staff. Five, explain whether these municipalities have established management boards and outline the number of meetings that have been held by the boards since the establishment providing any resolutions for such meetings and whether allowances have been paid to board members for the meetings held as prescribed. Lastly, outline the general terms of relation of the board members and elaborate whether such terms are similar to those of other boards within the county government and whether these terms meet the standards set out by the SRC guidelines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. Next is... Uh... Senator for Taita Taveta County, John Zumaruma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity uh, to request for a statement on the ongoing strike by medical personnel in Taita Taveta County. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise pursuant to Standing Order 53 to seek a statement from the Standing Committee on Health regarding the ongoing strike by medical personnel in Taita Taveta County. In the statement, the committee should, one, appraise the Senate on the reasons presented by the striking workers that necessitated the industrial action, two, update the Senate on any measures taken by the county government of Taita Taveta to address the issues raised by the striking workers before commencement of their industrial action. Three, inform the Senate of the steps the county government is taking to resolve the strike. And finally, provide an account of the number of casualties in the four sub-counties resulting from this industrial action, which could have been avoided had the strike not occurred. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next is uh, statement by 
Senator Forum, Senator Joseph Giduku, is not uh, present. That statement is dropped. The other one is the uh, statement from the Senator for Kisi County, Senator Richard Onyonka. Also, the statement is dropped. This is uh, your point of honor, Senator Munihaji Mohammed. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise uh, and, uh, on a point of order. Thank you uh, your point of order. Thank you very much because you, you just press the intervention key and you wait for the speaker's attention. Thank you. That is the way to go, not uh, shouting points of order in the chamber. No, I had, I had already placed you, it. You are leading by example. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, thank thank you. you very much. You thank just you. press and you wait. Uh, thank you. I think uh, Senator King, I should take and note. I should lead <laughs> Gloria and the rest. Angela, Senator Chelage. <laughs> uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I rise uh, on a point of order to seek your guidance on an issue that is affecting the House generally. And this is with regard to our committee work. Most of the committees, Honorable Speaker, are experiencing a lot of uh, current issues. Uh, members appear to be a bit uh, disenchanted and therefore it is very difficult for the chairs of those committees to be able to uh, prosecute the matters that are before those committees. Mr. Speaker, this has been mainly uh, been assisted by the fact that uh, f so far we have not uh, been able to know uh, from our committee chairs what are the budgets of our respective committees. We have already done a quarter of the financial year July, August, September, and so far there has been no movement at all. There are reports that are waiting to be uh, concluded. There are public participation activities that needs to be done, and all this will require members to volunteer and attend those meetings, Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, uh, I wanted to propose, Mr. Speaker, that you hold a kamkunji so that these issues can be discussed in, uh, in plenary by all the members, and members also, and the chairs of those committees. I know you chair the liaison committee, but maybe uh, liaison may not be uh, uh, pushing strong enough so that the interests of those chairs that uh, you preside over can be, able, can be taken care of. Uh, the second issue, Honorable Speaker, is the fact that uh, we have information that uh, our <coughs> the Senate had a pending bills of about 450 million in the last financial year. We need to know as a Senate, because you know, the Senate, in my, in, my, in my seven years in this House, I know there's a budget that comes from the Parliamentary Service Commission to the Senate. Now that budget, when it comes to, it arrives at the Senate, who now budgets that money? And who amongst the members here uh, makes a decision on how that money is supposed to be used? Because I know, we as members are accountable to our people. So what clarification are you seeking from the chair? What, what the clarification I'm seeking, chair, is that we need to have a kamkunji as soon as possible. Prayer? In fact, this kamkunji should have been done before we opened the house yesterday so that members can be briefed on what is happening so that committees can be vibrant again. Most of the committees that are taking issues, they are taking issues that of uh, uh, public uh, limelight so that they can get that... Uh, mileage or in the press. But in reality, most of the committees are struggling in terms of budget, uh, in terms of uh, quorum. And this cannot, because they, most of our business is transacted to the, through the committees. And if the committees are not meeting, then it means we'll only be coming here yeah. to... Your point is made, uh, Senator Moment, in fact, I've heard you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And I'll give guidance on that particular matter. Thank you. on Kamukunji as it is it and all these uh, interests. Now I'm not able to differentiate. 
on what, what, what issues the members want to, to contribute here. I want to give just to... I'll give you one minute each, two from this side and two from this other side on the issue raised by, by <laughs> Senator Mohamed Fak. And then we are going to give a few, maybe 20 or so minutes for the statements. Senator Gloria. Thank you, Speaker. I'm glad that Senator Faki has brought this issue up. Speaker, like every other institution, the Senate actually runs on a budget. And Mr. Speaker, we have been reminded severally by Gen Z that we need to live within our means and we must practice austerity measures. However, Mr. Speaker, the Senate, and particularly the Senators, do not have any oversight of the budget that we have as a Senate, Mr. Speaker. In the National Assembly, they have a budget and appropriation committee that actually is able to give foresight and control on the expenditure. But in the Senate, Mr. Speaker, there's a lot of gray areas, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, we had Senator Sifuna sweating because the air conditioning system here has a problem. This morning, Mr. Speaker, we could barely hear the Minister for Roads because our sound system here doesn't work. However, Mr. Speaker, for some very weird reason, we are prioritizing the purchases of red carpets, hanging lights, and all sorts of other things, Mr. Speaker. As we speak, I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, we really do not have oversight of even on basic things such as travel, Mr. Speaker. And we just are asking as a house of oversight, Mr. Speaker, if we can be allowed to see the money that has been appropriated to Senate and how we can be able to use that money with, with the security measures, Mr. Speaker. And finally, just to conclude, Mr. Speaker, because I am not a chair. We have been at Senator Moses Kajwan. Mr. Speaker, to, together with Senator Ch uh, Cheriot, we have been in this Senate uh, from the 11th Parliament. And this Senate has changed. We are no longer able to execute our functions in committees. We are no longer able to even do parliamentary diplomacy, which is a critical aspect of any parliament. And Mr. Speaker, the problem is not just the allocations at the committee level. The problem is a global allocation to the Senate. The problem is a global allocation to Parliament as an institution. And Mr. Speaker, we've allowed people to ride roughshod over us, contrary to Article 2493, which requires this Parliament to allocate adequate funds to enable each commission and dependent office to perform its functions. We are allowing the National Treasury to set a budget for us. Mr. Speaker, that is where the problem starts. And Mr. Speaker, I belong to the liaison committee, which you so ably chair. I believe this matter now needs to be brought to members, because members don't understand. Senator Chalege. Mr. Speaker, one, I want to raise that these issues have been saying it in, in secrecy, but now it's open. I want to thank Senator Fak. Mr. Speaker, it's very unfortunate that we have a pending bill of 450 Kenya shillings, million. Who, who, who spent that money? I'm not aware. Mr. Speaker, who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Mr. Speaker, number two, how can you slash that every committee gets seven million? What will you do with seven million? How can, we cannot even reach Dandora Stadium to do audit of even toy market, Mr. Speaker, to investigate, let alone going to Kericho or Nandi or Marsabit, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is an affront to the institution of parliament, more so to the Senate, Mr. Speaker. And I'm requesting that we need to adjourn indefinitely and discuss, or Mr. Speaker, I'm proposing, let us only do plenary sittings and do away with committee and parliamentary diplomacy until this matter is added and determined, Mr. Speaker, through the committee, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, even finally, we might give us a date. Now, uh, I want to give guidance on that matter. Uh, I will request the leadership of. I I want to give guidance, uh, majority leader, since you will be able to to mediate this matter and the minority leadership and the majority leadership. 
you preserve your comment so that uh, you not in be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so I request that the booth on the on that's on the challenge. On the majority linda, I want to give you guidance now. And I don't know this bromance between you and Senator Gloria this afternoon is a bit worrying. <laughs> So both the leadership of the majority, leadership of the minority to sit down even this afternoon or tomorrow and agree on appropriate date for the Kamkunji. All parliaments actually are run through Kamkunji because that is where we do housekeeping. And before things go out of hand, Kamkunji is very, very necessary in any democracy. So let's now get the 20 minutes uh, for comments, brief comments on the statements. And the senators, make sure you don't give comments on your statement. Senator Sifuna. Honorable Chair, allow me to begin by uh, commenting on the statement by Senator Gloria and take this opportunity to congratulate her. I think this is the first time in parliamentary history that uh, a pregnancy announcement has been woven into a parliamentary question. <laughs> and uh, Chair, she did well to disclose because the question was on uh, Linda Mama. And if she had not told us that, we would have accused her of conflict of interest because she's soon going to be a beneficiary of Linda Mama. So, Honorable Speaker, I would like that when the committee takes charge of this matter, they should also appraise us on whether there are any pending bills or uh, amounts that are owed by this program, under this program, to any of our county hospitals. Because I remember last time the CS for Health was here, she had assured us that uh, all those uh, pending bills would be cleared soon. So the committee should take charge of that. Number two, Honorable Chair, it is quite disturbing, and you can see the Senator of Kisumu has brought two questions on the state of education in the country, and if, uh, specifically even uh, regarding the safety of pupils and students across the country. Of course, we continue to condole with our brothers and sisters who lost their young children uh, at the Hillside and Russia School in Nyeri. And Honorable Chair, any one of us, whether you are a parent or not, or a parent to be like uh, Senator Gloria, all of us are concerned about the safety of the students, and uh, we would want that matter to be resolved. Honorable Speaker, you'll also be aware that uh, just this afternoon, the students in the universities have issued a two weeks uh, strike notice again over the university uh, funding model. Of course, I have very uh, serious reservations about the announcement I saw yesterday, uh, or the day before, that uh, we are putting together a committee of almost 200 people to deal with a problem that we caused ourselves. I have asked myself severally, what was the problem with the funding model that we went through when I was in the university honorable chair? It was very easy for the chiefs, for the uh, religious leaders, and our close family associates to uh, uh, communicate with the Higher Education Laws Board and tell them the state of our financial, uh, you know, our, our finances. Uh, so, Honorable Speaker, I feel that these are very important statements and the committee should endeavor to ensure that they come up with proper answers for us to deal with these issues once and for all. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Sifuna. Kindly, if you are making comments, just two minutes are enough for a brief comment. Senator uh, Omar Sheikh Maliam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I also wanted to comment on the education, on the statement raised by uh, Senator Kisumu. Uh, Mr. Speaker, where I am seated, uh, Mr. Speaker, education system in Kenya is discriminative. I raise a statement concerning hijab in uh, some public schools, in secondary schools. And still, up to now, they are not allowing a Muslims ladies in a school. That is uh, Alliance Girls and uh, Kenya High. Mr. Speaker, I, that statement is up to, I, I interrogated with the PS, I mean, Minister of uh, Education, and the reason they give us is just, it's not an answer specifically. And on that, these schools, these both schools, is public schools, and is funded by taxpayers. And Mr. Speaker, when it comes to also security, safety measures in school, 
first priorities in a in a in a institution in a society we must take care of our kids last night when i saw in the news there is a septic tank which has not been in school the kids drop in and lost her life mr speaker in we need the ministry of education to take charge and inspect each schools private and uh, private schools and public schools so that if it is not conducive for our kids it must be close thank you mr speaker senator kavidu agnes are you commenting on the statements I'll call you back. Will you, you said you'll call me back. <laughs> not, <laughs> not you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I'm commenting on this statement uh, by Sifuna. Uh, Senator, by Sifuna. Senator Sifuna. Senator yes. Sifuna, Nairobi, about Ms. Florence uh, Wanza uh, Munyao, who has disappeared in Congo. Uh, she went as a driver. I understand the lorry is back here in Kenya, but the person is not here. And nobody seems to be knowing where she is. And so, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm wondering if the lorry is more important than a human being. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would request the committee who the statement will be put to, to make sure that uh, they do this one very fast. And Mr. Speaker, that's why we, we are saying that we need the, the Kamukunji very uh, fast, because the committee has to continue with their job. At the committee level is where we senators do most of the work uh, at the Senate. So without the committees working and functioning properly, the work of the Senate will be stuck. Mr. Speaker, I request and I beg the Committee of Security to take this matter very seriously because the parents of Florence are sleepless, are having sleepless nights because they don't know where their daughter is. Uh, the other statement by the Senator of Kisumu uh, about the fires in the schools. Mr. Speaker, when parents take their children to school, they take their children to school well, and uh, knowing that the, their children are safe and secure at school. But when these fires are there and children die, and even some disappear without being known where they have, they've disappeared to, Mr. Speaker, it's very, very depressing for the parents to take a child to school and get back uh, a dead person to come and bury. Mr. Speaker, this will worry a lot of parents, and maybe some of them will be even afraid of taking their, their children to school because uh, they'll be fearing that they might not come back. This is very devastating, and I, I, I ask the committee uh, to take very hasty measures to make sure that they take the government to task because even students must be given security. Uh, even if it means policemen being employed and deployed to schools for the security of these children, it's important because they are helpless, they cannot uh, protect themselves. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Next is uh, Youth Rinda, Senator Buru Oginga. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to comment on the statement sought by uh, Senator Chute uh, regarding the the North, uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, North, uh, Northern uh, region of our country. Mr. Speaker, sir, the marginalization of these areas started right from independence. And at independence, Mr. Speaker, 
there was a sessional paper of 1965, which clearly stated that uh, investments in development of our country will be based on returns, the highest return per shilling. And uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, this was intended to develop only high potential areas of our country, those which were agriculturally viable, and marginalize the northeastern, which was not, which was looking as if it was not viable. But the, fat, the soil there, Mr. Speaker, sir, is very fertile. Mr. Speaker, there are rivers passing through there. Mr. Speaker, sir, there are potential in the minerals, miner, mineral resources underneath. And Mr. Speaker, the area has so much of the animal stocks, the, the, the animals, which can be taken, so we should establish proper slaughterhouses so that we can export meat. If you go to a country like Botswana, it is a dry country, but they are very rich because they are exporting their meat to, 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 Nini, to Middle Eastern countries. Mr. Speaker, therefore, it is important that the committee investigates this properly and finds, and we must find ways and means of empowering the people of North. The, there was no investment at all, Mr. Speaker, until just a few years ago, when all these organizations called Drought Ward are being established, as all and so on, ministries. These ones are now just a drop, a small drop in the ocean because they were ignored for many years. There were no roads, there were no dams, there was no electricity. Up to now, big cities are still using generators to, to get power. So, Mr. Speaker, I think they, we should increase efforts to make sure that we also benefit from this very rich region, which has a lot of resources, both underneath and, uh, and very rich soils. We need to establish dams and good roads and electricity so that these people, the resources there can be exploited and uh, we need not have poverty there. So I support the statement sought by Honorable Chute. Let the committee investigate properly. Thank you, Mr. Thank Speaker. you. Uh, I'm wondering, I'm not able to tell exactly the senators left on my screen uh, the ones who were agitating for Kamukunji. Are you still on Kamukunji business or you want to make comments? Okay, Senator Oroba. Thank you, Speaker. I want to add my voice on Senator Tomogenda's statement about the safety of uh, pupils and students in schools across the country. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you know we've been experiencing a lot of unrest. Uh, we have seen from Dagoretti to all these schools, including fires, Mr. Speaker. And uh, for me, I think that it is time that we stop addressing the issue in one way. Mr. Speaker, I think we need to actually look at what is causing this unrest, Mr. Speaker. And above and beyond that, Mr. Speaker, I went to my former school, St. George's, to check on the safe fire safety measures, Mr. Speaker. And I realized that a lot of schools take for granted the issue, the policy that was given some years back of removing the grills from the windows and ensuring that the dormitories are uh, left open, Mr. Speaker. In all the fire cases where we have lost students, we have seen that the dormitories were locked and this, the dormitories also had grills, Mr. Speaker. So I urge the Ministry of Education to actually have a team to go and assess and pro provide a checklist to all the schools so that it is not about a 67-page uh, policy that's there, Mr. Speaker. Most of the people implementing are not going to read 67 pages. If it can just be reduced to two A4s of a checklist of what should be there and what should not be there, I think we'll be making some headway. And Mr. Speaker, 
there has been a conversation about abolishing boarding schools, Mr. Speaker. That is not the way to go. There are so many reasons why parents choose to take their children to boarding schools. So just because we have a problem or a calamity in one boarding school or two, then you cannot start saying that the boarding schools must be shut down, Mr. Speaker. We have seen uh, accidents happening in day schools and we don't call for the day schools to be shut down, Mr. Speaker. So I call upon the Ministry of Education uh, and led by the Minister Julius Migosi to ensure that there is a checklist provided because we are lacking a checklist from the Ministry of Education to make sure that our facilities, the dormitories particularly, are uh, safe and uh, not only from fires but also from intruders and all sorts of other risks that are there. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. <coughs> Senator Kajwang Moses. Mr. Speaker, I'd, I'd like to comment on the statements on the state of education and the state of health care in the country. Mr. Speaker, when we resumed our sittings yesterday, we came back during the recess, we lost 21 children, 21 children at the age of 12 to an unfortunate fire at Endarasha Hillside Academy. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Homer Bay delegation, I wish to convey the condolences of the people of Homer Bay. A house with a conscience ought to have resumed its sittings with a minute silence. Mr. Speaker, I'm a parent of a child in that demographic. My son turned 12 years old. And I would, shut, I, I would really tremble to think that I would send my son to school, to a boarding school, to pick up skills and to relate with other children, only for him to come back in a body bag. Mr. Speaker, if you read the story of Endarasha, it is a horror story. This is one of those things that if our committees were properly resourced, the first business would have been for the relevant committee, be it education or security, to go to Endarasha, to go there and establish the facts. We cannot trust the government to tell the story. We cannot trust the executive to tell the story. And that is why parliament exists, such that if there is something that has happened in this nation, and Kenyans are very skepti skeptical of the account that the national exe executive provides. Mr. Speaker, I want to encourage the relevant committee. If all of us cannot go to Russia, we must go there. We must establish the facts. We must assure the parents that it is safe to reopen the school. Mr. Speaker, a school where 21 children have been roasted to death, you can imagine the kind of trauma that will visit the other children if they are forced to go back to that school. And why would parents be forced to send their children back to that school? Because they are paid fees for the entire year, and they don't have an option to transfer their children. Mr. Speaker, we need to be empathetic, and Endarasha Hillside Academy summarizes the state of education in this country, that it doesn't matter. Children can die as long as you don't touch the mountain. It doesn't matter. Children can die as long as you don't destabilize the politics. A country that does not put children at the center of its policy and its politics is a country that is dead. Mr. Speaker, this morning, the CS for Labor brought here a redacted summary of Kenyans who have acquired jobs in the recent job-seeking spree that the president has been on. Out of that entire schedule, Mr. Speaker, 60% had secured jobs as housemates. Housemates. We are exporting housemates we are manufacturing housemaids. Mr. Speaker, what kind of education system is that? South Africa, the education system has produced and exported Elon Musk. He's now the richest man in the world. The Indian education system has produced and exported executives of tech companies globally. Kenya has produced and exported housemaids to Saudi Arabia and Qatar. It is a big shame. That is a state of education in this country. Mr. Speaker, I believe that if there is a crisis that we need to deal with today, it is the education crisis that is manifested in strikes at all levels from primary to secondary to universities. A university funding model that does not make sense, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I conclude on the issue of the state of healthcare as raised by Senator Mwaruma. Senator Mwaruma, some of these strikes by our doctors they relate to delays in exchequer releases. But sometimes, the county governments deduct money from staff and they do not remit. And Mr. Speaker, if you allow me just one minute to inform Senator Sifuna 
who was very hard on CS Mbadi earlier in the morning. It is unfortunate I was not here to provide that information at that point. Mr. Speaker, CS Mbadi, after meeting the president, had an appointment with his tailor. Yesterday, there was a national outcry about the state of his suits and that he had cut his suits, the cloth too big for his size. And Mr. Speaker, if you all observe, CS Mbadi looks emaciated, he looks stressed, he looks fatigued. Mr. Speaker, we should all pray for CS Mbadi so that his suits can fit him again. We donated him when he was in good health. We donated him when his suits could fit him. In only two weeks, Mr. Speaker, CS Mbadi, yes. the suits what? cannot fit because of the state of the economy. Please give us back our Mbadi. Mr. Speaker, I am an amateur this house. My point of order is on 101. And I have been learning through these uh, senators on how to conduct myself in this house, a house of procedure, a house of rules, a house of mature people, Mr. Speaker. It is very saddening, 101, 101. Kindly refer to your, your standing order, 101. Mr. Speaker, let me... Point of yes, Mr. Don't Speaker, them, them, it is very them. sad when some of us young people come here and we observe these other senators breaking the rules, acting misleading, acting very immature, Mr. Speaker, to come to the point of coming to discuss a cabinet secretary's dress code, a man discussing the dress code of another man in chambers, Mr. Speaker. It is shocking, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I want to also say, just allow me to conclude by saying, allow me to conclude by saying, I wish had Senator Tom Ojen, has had Senator Kajuang, if he stood up to tell us that now, after his very extensive point of, of, of who we are exporting, Mr. Speaker, and by the way, housemaids are not kazi ni kazi, Mr. Speaker. All jobs are dignified. I wish that this senator stood and said that the cabinet secretary was busy working and creating more jobs Conclude of engineers. Of also, but he, he has come to discuss the dress code of another man, Mr. Speaker. We need to first of all that's, investigate the intention okay, and the interests of Senator Kajuang to discuss and looking at Senator other Gloria, men and discussing their dress code, Mr. Speaker. That's good enough. Mr. Speaker, it is very strange. As a woman, it is very strange that I come here. He should apologize. As women, yes. we are not complaining. As women who are looking at this cabinet secretary and his dress code, we are not complaining. What is Senator Kajuang Senator looking Gloria. for? in oh, the dress Senator code Gloria. of our cabinet secretary, Mr. Senator Speaker. Gloria. He must withdraw, withdraw and apologize. Withdraw Senator and Gloria. that is a dignified cabinet. You know when the chair talks to you, Senator Gloria, you should just listen and pause. And the, 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 the cracks in front of me. When I call, a chair calls a member, you should just switch off the mic so that they can listen to, to the message that I want to convey. Next is uh, Senator Chalige. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to comment on two issues. One, uh, in two minutes. In okay, two minutes, just on two statements. I'm not going outside what is happening. Don't worry. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of state of education, I, I think I want to appeal to university students. Uh, while they're expressing reservations on the university funding model, Mr. Speaker, I think it is important that the technical committee has been appointed. I want to appeal to students from universities to pr present and propose the university f uh, funding model for review, Mr. Speaker. I think as a way out and solution, we should revert to initial funding model of university where all of us were able to access our education's loan board across the country. So, Speaker, I condemn with the strongest terms possible the, the blajuning, the, 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 the attack against students of multimedia university yesterday by the police officers, Mr. Speaker. It was so embarrassing where we live in the country of rural law. 
But I have no opinion because the acting inspector general of police, Bwana Masengeli, is a fugitive of justice. And that shows bad on the police. Mr. Speaker, I have been a victim of police brutality and harassment. I will not allow any other Kenyan to go through what I have undergone, Mr. Speaker. I was arrested naked on 14 April 2022 in my bed. Mr. Speaker, if I was at a certain age, Mr. Speaker, if I was at certain age, if I was at certain age, I would have cast those police officers, Mr. Speaker. If I was beyond 80 in my culture, Mr. Speaker, when you see, Mr. Speaker, when you see a person who's 80 years and above, I would have cast, and uh, Senator Lebanon would have understood, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of safety in schools, I want to pass my condolences, Mr. Speaker, to the in the Russia community, Mr. Madam, Mr. Senator Speaker. Ch the three gracious ladies are just yelling because you are less than the naked. I don't know what they saw missing. <laughs> Plus Mr. Speaker, would they want to see me naked? Can I table, they can see me in camera so that I can... Give him 30 seconds to conclude. Mr. Speaker, you know, Mr. Speaker, the gracious lady might have seen more machines. Than we are, that they want to see mine. You know, some of our Kalenjin propellers are dangerous. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I want to, uh, to no, pass no, Senator my Chalegay. condolences. Senator Chalegay, what, is, what are you referring at? You no, they understood. Senator if you see the excitement Which of Senator Karen, he understands what a um, Kalenjin propeller is, Madam, Mr. Speaker. So, in, on the issue of the Russia Academy, Mr. Speaker, I want to pass my condolences to the family, friends, and the community of Nyeri, Murima, Mr. Speaker, for the loss of 21 uh, students. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education should give us a proper guidelines on how school safety should be handled. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Including the, the statement hour, maybe I want to give Senator Koiti Andrew and one more member from this side, then we conclude that. Uh, uh, Mr. That Speaker, hour. sir. Thank you for the opportunity to address this house. I'll contribute to the statement on uh, our schools. The, main, the missing link or the elephant in the room is the way in which school inspectorate or the school inspectors have been sidelined. They have no budgets, they are not operational. So even if we pass these beautiful laws and regulations, there's nobody to enforce them. So the, we need the education sector to go back to a system whereby they had a robust department of, in, of in, uh, school in, inspectors who could go around the schools like Senator Gloria did when she went to her former school and found that the grills were not well fixed so that they can... You didn't, clor, you didn't clarify that. You just said you went to your school and I don't know what. So we need the school inspectors to come back and begin enforcing these regulations that we are passed and laws that are passed by this house to ensure the safety of our children. Also, uh, apart from the school inspectors, we need to, uh, to look at these private schools and the public, the, the, the taxpayer must go back to funding and providing proper public education so that these private schools are not crowded. The idea that the government only collects taxes and provides no goods and services is anathema to the republican nature of this state. Thank you. This, but not the last, Senator Mutinda. The mic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And I want to start by sincerely giving my very uh, heartfelt, sincere condolences to the family and the, of uh, the parents of Edarasha uh, Primary School in Nyeri. But Mr. Speaker, we have a tendency whereby we bring matters before this house. And what we do not address is the timeline for when these issues uh, uh, should be given uh, feedbacks. It is a high time that the Committee of Education that I believe will handle this matter to fasten and speed up because we await and then you find that other issues are still cropping up. It is a high time also the County Director of Education for Nyeri, where this uh, school is, 
should by now have given also uh, his statement or a report as to what really transpired. I want to thank our president, Dr. William, whom we saw the other day when he was in the county of Neri, actually just this last weekend. And he committed to ensuring that he's going to support the school coming back to his status. But as far as uh, my colleague Senator Mutata has mentioned, the inspectorate team should be able to give a report. It's one thing when funds are there, but what are the kind of standards that need to be adhered so that our kids are safe? We entrust our kids actually uh, uh, in these institutions uh, by, by the heads of these uh, particular learning institutions. Learning institutions at some point in this country have become a commercial business, not adhering to the required standards of the Ministry of Education. Uh, the other day we were even concerned in Nairobi, uh, uh, in the size of uh, Gidurai, where we have a primary school one, pre one classroom with over 80 students, yet the regulations are very clear that the maximum number should be up to 45. Kids are squeezed in there, yet uh, uh, the, the, the ministry is there, the people are being paid each and every month to ensure that they partake their roles. Even if funds are not in place, but uh, the person in charge should be able to ensure that in whatever time before the school, Okay, that is that. So next order, clerk. Order number eight, the county government's amendment bill, Senate bills number 39 of 2024, first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to amend the county government's act to provide for inter-county transfers of county public officers the establishment of the county public service boards, consultative forum, and for connected purposes. Next order. Order number nine, the labor migration and management number two bill, Senate bills number 42 of 2024. A bill for an act of parliament to provide for the legal first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to provide for the regulation of private employment agencies and the recruitment of workers within and outside Kenya, safeguard the rights and welfare of job seekers and migrant workers, and for connected purposes. Next order. Order number, order number 10, motion, alteration of the Senate calendar for part four for the that, of the third session. Uh, Senator Majority Linda, move the motion. Mike, please. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move the motion on the alteration of the Senate calendar for part four of the third session, that notwithstanding the resolutions of the Senate made on the 15th of February uh, 2024 on the approval of Senate calendar and 19th of August 2024, the alteration of the Senate calendar, pursuant to standing order number 32-4, the Senate resolves to further alter its calendar regular sessions for the third session 2024 in respect to part four to one continue with regular sittings until thursday the 31st of october 2024 two proceed for recess from first of november 2024 three resume regular sittings on tuesday 12th november 2024 uh, mr speaker this is a decision that we reached at the spc alive to the fact of the next motion, actually, which you shall be speaking uh, about in a few minutes, Mr. Speaker, of the Senate Machinani program, which, as you are aware, uh, Mr. Speaker, is scheduled to take next week in Busia. But because of other uh, exigencies of work, Mr. Speaker, and considerations that need to be made, we've had to reschedule it, actually, to the month of November. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, that being the case, then, it means we have to re- do our calendar, as has been proposed uh, this afternoon, Mr. Speaker. This is a fairly straightforward matter, but there are two things that I'd wish to speak to. Uh, I didn't get a chance, Mr. Speaker, to speak when Senator, Moses, uh, uh, Senator Musa Faki uh, spoke uh, earlier on the need for members to show up in committee sittings. And I wish he had actually matched uh, his word with his action, Mr. Speaker, by staying in the chamber long enough. One of the biggest tragedies of this current Senate, Mr. Speaker. And I must say this with a very heavy heart, uh, Mr. Speaker. 
is that it is extremely empty on most afternoons, Mr. Speaker. I have never seen Parliament as empty as it is. Mr. Speaker, I am used to seeing a Senate where people debate, and not on points of orders, Mr. Speaker, on bills and legislation, Mr. Speaker. That practice has since long disappeared because people have become transactional. They come here, they issue statements, and disappear. In fact, Mr. Speaker, it's only that I don't want to name people, but I, if you see the number of people that bring statements to this house. Many afternoon, Mr. Speaker, they consider that to be legislative work. Then you wonder, who is going to process this statement, Mr. Speaker? If everybody was just to come, lay a statement, and disappear. Why do people fight so hard to be elected to come to this house, Mr. Speaker? Then leave your chairs to be empty. Mr. Speaker, we must also be serious as a legislature. I listened to people lament this afternoon, oh, this is not working, labor, I don't know education, I don't know the other. Mr. Speaker, begin first of all by transacting even that business in this house, Mr. Speaker. This is a premium platform, Mr. Speaker. Millions of Kenyans yearn for the opportunity to sit in the, legis in the legislature of the, of the Republic, Mr. Speaker. I don't understand this new generation of legislators that we have in this current session, Mr. Speaker. That people show up at 2.30, and by 3.15, you cannot see them in the House. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I don't think that it is for lack of uh, things to do, Mr. Speaker, that you find many. Look at the experience, for example, Senator Oburu, the youth leader, is serving his seventh uh, term in Parliament, Mr. Speaker. We have a point of order from Senator Andy Okech. Mr. Speaker, I rise understanding order number 22. And I hope on this one, I want to wish the majority leader the courage to be able to check point of order number 22. And point of order number 23, Mr. Speaker. I do empathize, and Mr. Speaker, because they are very long standing orders, allow me to speak to them without reading them because they are too long. And the reason why they are too long, Mr. Speaker, is because in this entire... St Mr. Speaker, can you, can, may, may you protect me from the noise the other side by Senator Chiral Gay, Mr. Speaker? Just protect me, Mr. Speaker. Because what, what the majority is talking about here is very, very important, Mr. Speaker. And because it's important, Mr. Speaker, the point of orders number 22 and 23 are functional point of orders, Mr. Speaker. They are the... Po the point of orders that prescribe functions of leadership of this house, Mr. Speaker. They define the leadership of the majority side and their deputies. They define the leadership of the minority side and their deputies. And they have got functions, including, Mr. Speaker, whipping members of this house to be in this house. Mr. Speaker, is it in order for a whole majority leader, Mr. Speaker, to, 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 to get up and come here and start lamenting about his members who are not showing up in the house and therefore making the house always empty, Mr. Speaker. Is it an abdic abdication of duty that uh, majority yeah, leader, okay, uh, together with his deputy, and majority whip, and deputy majority whip, and even the majority minority leader, Mr. Speaker, are not doing their work in terms of whipping members of this house to be in Senator this house, Mr. Speaker? Why must we sit as senators, Mr. Speaker, Senator Ndio Kech, have your seat. Resume your seat. If I am the majority in the Kiriari, what he meant about elections, once you elect and you take personal responsibility, it is not about whipping members to be in the chamber. It is about personal responsibility and duty after you get elected. That is what he meant. And uh, it does not do the work of the whip, which is done by Senator Boni Karwale. Proceed, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I'm struggling to follow what my good friend Senator Eddy uh, is trying to converse. Because, you know, I never whipped him to put up posters in Migori and ask the people of Migori that he wants to represent them in this house. Therefore, it cannot be my business to whip you as a member of the Senate because I'm a leader in this house to tell you come. Mr. Speaker, I was giving the example of Senator Oburu, a fine gentleman, a revered legislator, serving his seventh term in Parliament. But every afternoon, from 2.30 to as late as possible, 
uh, sometimes, despite his extremely advanced age, Mr. Speaker, he has the energy to sit in this house. But you find young people, Mr. Speaker, that are in this house who show up for two minutes, they pick up their call, they disappear. They are chasing 1,001 things, Mr. Speaker, none of which is exceptional and bringing any value to the country. Mr. Speaker, I thought the rule of life, Mr. Speaker, is that you succeed first at one thing so that you advance to the next level. Therefore, I want to request and humbly plead with my colleagues that, Mr. Speaker, because we have got such a sacred responsibility, and there are many things that the country is looking up to us uh, to resolve, can we find the time to attend a uh, house sitting, Mr. Speaker? If you look at the order paper today, Mr. Speaker, you will see more than 20 bills that are the committee of the whole stage, Mr. Speaker, some of which have been on this order paper for more than five months, Mr. Speaker, because we cannot raise 24 delegations, surely, Mr. Speaker. Don't we, do we need a kamkunji? Like we are being in, uh, invited, Mr. Speaker, that we need to call people to come. These are not budgetary issues, Mr. Speaker. Nobody, you don't require a budget, Mr. Speaker, for you to uh, do your legislative work. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I don't know what Senator Eddie has eaten before coming into the House, but I, I am trying to address you, Mr. Speaker. He is actually over shouting, and I cannot concentrate, Mr. Speaker, because of the noise that he's making. Senator Andy Okech, can you, if you are consulting the Senator Zifu, and a very low toll, mention of our towns. <laughs> Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I want us to take time, look into the issues that are being raised, and be fair to your country, because your country pays you extremely well. We are told many times that you are among the best paid legislators on the planet Earth. Uh, can we also deliver quality work? You know, and just stop, uh, you know, my good friend, Senator Kajuang, even as you expose on the challenges that we have in the Republic, it goes beyond just pointing out to the maladies and the challenges that you are facing. And be fair to it. It cannot remain on record what you said this afternoon, that despite our, the challenges that we have in our education sector, that our education sector produces only house help. You are not a house help. You went to Moy University together with me. You are here because the education system worked. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, even as we complain about the things that are not working in this uh, country, Mr. Speaker, let us not exaggerate some of these challenges. I believe this country has produced serious professionals on the globe. It's not just housemates, the way Senator Moses Kajuang uh, wanted uh, to paint it, Mr. Speaker. Be fair to your country, Moses Senator Kajuang. Senator Kajuang, what's your point of intervention? Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, on, on, um, on, 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 on matters of fact, I was with uh, Senator uh, Cheriot, Majority Leader, at Moi University, at the Student Center. We went to address a Kamkunji not too long ago, and the students told us the kind of problems that they are facing. And Mr. S Mr. Speaker, is Senator Cheriot in order? In the morning session, while he was away, he's lambasting members who, were, who are not here. While he was away, Senator Cherarke and Senator Onyonka put the CS for Labor to task because the CS Labor brought us a schedule showing the jobs that we have exported. Mr. Speaker, it is a fact that report was tabled here that the president has been gallivanting going all over the world and the bulk of the jobs that he has secured are housemaids. It is described there, Mr. Speaker. It is a fact that was tabled here. And Mr. Speaker, it is also a fact that India produces and manufactures technical and IT and computer science experts. And that's why Silicon Valley is dominated by Indians. Mr. Speaker, can, 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 the, can the majority leader, even in challenging, yes, we, we had a good education at Moi University, that's why I'm here. But if we are exporting labor, if that is one of our products, if diaspora remittances are bigger than the returns from coffee and tea, Mr. Speaker, that means that the production of labor is our biggest industry. But Senator if Kajuang. we are producing house girls, Mr. Speaker, we should be ashamed of it. Speaker, Senator Moses Kajuang 
has not disputed the fact that I laid uh, bare in the Senate this afternoon, that he is misleading this House by claiming that the only labor that Kenya produces is ho uh, housemaids. That is not a fact, Mr. Speaker. I know for the record, Mr. Speaker, you didn't speak of the percentage. You said only. Where did you learn your English, Moses? Only means 100%, uh, Mr. Speaker. You can see now Mr. Speaker is trying to amend his statement because he knows that he has misled uh, this House, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that is not the point that I'm trying to converse. I know for a fact, Mr. Speaker, that part of the reason why the foreign uh, remittance, Mr. Speaker, is high is because we have serious professionals that we have produced from doctors to engineers that are serving all over Honorable the world. Members, order, Honorable Member, allow the majority leader to address his point. Proceed, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Senator Korir, Senator Gloria, allow the Majority Leader to proceed without interruption. Proceed. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Speaker, I want to conclude, and uh, I want to commend the Senators that are in the House this afternoon, including my friend Moses Kaffee. Long as serving member of the Senate, Mr. Speaker, but always here at 2.30 seats, patiently up to 6.30 on most afternoons, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to request Senator Mazzaio to second this motion. Senator Mazzaio. Asante, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'll be able to say that this is a good Mr. Speaker, kitu cha kwanza nataka kuunga mkono hoja hii ya kuweza kugeuza uh, ratiba ama taratibu ya kalenda yetu ya nyumba. Mr. Speaker, kitu cha kwanza ni kwamba kunazo sababu ambazo zinafanya tuweze kugeuza kalenda hii. Cha kwanza ni sababu tumekuwa tuki ile tar ta, ile tarehe ambayo ilikuwa imewekwa katika kupeleka senate mashinani imeweza kugeuka sasa na na ikawekwa tarehe zingine za mwezi wa 11 bwana speaker vile vile pia itaweza kupatia nafasi ma senate kuweza kujiandaa na kusafiri kuenda mpaka huko bungoma ili kuweza kushirikiana na ndugu zao wananchi wa bungoma kuwa na hiyo uh, uh, ratiba ya, ya, ya senate ya senate mashinani bwana speaker mimi kama nikiwa nitaweza kutoa ule advice ama sijui tunaweza kuita namna gani lakini kwamba katika hili bunge letu la senate sasa imekuwa ni lazima tu tuzingatie mambo ya kwamba tuko na seriousness kwamba hizi tabia ambazo tunaanza sasa za kuweza kwamba kuona kama seneta mwenzako anaongea na pengine huwezi kupendelea vile anavyoongea unasimama mara moja na kusema kwamba ama una bofia ya kile kibogizo kiko mbele yako alafu unaweza kusema kwamba uh, unataka kutoa hoja ya nidhamu hoja ya nidhamu bwana speaker kama ninavyoelewa mimi katika ile wakati ambao tumekuwa hapa ndani na tumekuwa pamoja na ndugu yangu Cheriot na pia vile vile uh, Kajuang. Najua hoja ya nidhamu ni kitu muhimu sana ambao kumuingilia mtu katikati akiwa anaongea pengine saa nyingine nakuwa inapoteza hata ule mwelekeo ama zile fikra alizokuwa nazo kwanza. Tuweze kujizuia tumuache yule anayekuwa anaongea aongee mpaka amalize alafu ndio utaweza kujua mwelekeo wake ulikuwa namna gani. Hoja nidhamu ni sawa lakini tuzitumie kwa njia ya kisawa sawa. Hayo ndio maoni yangu ambayo naweza kusema. Na cha mwisho ambacho mimi ninaona ya kwamba ni cha muhimu bwana speaker. Hivi sasa hivi sasa tutaenda katika senate mashinani tutakuwa na watu wengi kule. Hivi na ukiangalia hapa ndani hivi sasa utapata ya kwamba maseneta walioko hapa pengine ni kidogo kuliko ile nambari nitakana kuwa. 
tumekuwa hapa nikikumbuka kama ile seneti ya kwanza ya mwaka wa 2013 bwana speaker ilikuwa inajaa sana mpaka ikifika saa 12 na nusu bado watu wamejaa bado maseneta wamejaa 